yeah hello there and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here and today we are going to look into the abstraction which is one of the uh, pillar of the oop or the object oriented programming so let us look into the abstraction over here abstraction is one of the most essential and the important feature of the object oriented programming and the uh, abstraction refers to providing only the e essential information about the data to the outside world and hiding the background detail or the implementation the main point uh, over here is uh, providing only the essential information and actually hiding the implementation and then the uh, detail of that particular object Considering a, a real-world example of man are driving a car, so let's say a man is driving a car, the man only knows that pressing the accelerator will increase the speed of the car. So if you are driving a car, when you press the accelerator, you know that the, it will increase the speed of the car or applying the brake will stop the car, right? But he doesn't know that how on a pressing accelerator the speed is increasing so you don't know the internal part of how it has been implemented like when you press the accelerator you, your car is moving forward or speed is increasing or when you brake that particular car it is going to stop it is the internal mechanism how the car is running so as a driver or as a user you usually don't know how that is implemented in uh, internal right so that is the uh, abstraction so you don't know how it is done in internally but you get to use the what is required so what is required for you you can uh, you need to you can accelerate right so you can accelerate the car and you can break the car right but you don't want to know the internal implementation how it is done inside of that particular car so that is the abstraction and we are going to implement in our code so let's go back to our uh, vs code over here and in vs code i have one uh, project already i have created a folder of abstraction over here so uh, let's go and create the new file over here and that let's call as a I'll create a let's say a car dot the a dot file and the abstraction can we can achieve using the abstract class or the interface so we have already learned about the abstract class previously right so let's go and create the abstract uh, class over here and that will be of the car so we have the abstract class of the car and we have some of the uh, let's go and say we have some of the function and this is the start and stop and then the drag right so let's also create some of the um, variables or the properties of this particular car so let's say a car can have a string type each of the uh, brand brand right and we can also have the type of string of the model model let's see and let's also have the int uh, type over here that will be of the uh, private variable of the speed speed over here and let's keep a default value of the zero and let's create the constructor for our car right so now we have the abstract class which has some of the properties as well as some of the methods over here so we have the method of the start stop and then the drive so what we can do is let's just not make this as abstract um, the abstract method right so let's create a concrete method over here and when we start the car let's uh, increase the speed of the car to let's say uh, a 20 over here right and let's also log this one so i'll just use a print and i'll just uh, print the speed over here or I'll just go and wrap this with the internal string and let's do the string interpolation and I'll just go and say the uh, speed is speed or we'll just say a uh, car speed is speed each right and then we'll just add that one over here and similarly I'll go to the uh, stop over here and once I have this sub, I'll just go and increase this 
speed to be of the let's say a uh, zero over here so when a car is stable I'll just uh, go and make the car uh, speed as of the zero and then the speed of the car will print out and um, I'll just go and I think the speed start and then we have a stop and then I think I will put another one which is of ACCE uh, accelerate right ACCE L E R accelerate that particular car and once we did the acceleration uh, we will just go and increase the speed of the car by let's say a uh, 100 over here and I'll just go and lock this one over here and since we have the abstract class we need to go and create the implementation and for that I'll just go and say uh, H O N D A Honda dot D let's say a uh, dot file over here and let's go and create the uh, simple class over here that will be of the H O N Honda which uh, extends from our car abstract class over here and once we have that uh, let's go and create the uh, abstraction uh, let's create the constructor for this one and we'll uh, pass from the brand and then the model from our honda constructor back to the super class so super each hour and uh, the parent class right so this is our parent class which is of the car and we are uh, extending it from the that so we can call it super over here so we need to pass that value back to the constructor of our super class over here so this is a drive class or the subclass over here and once we have this Honda what we are going to do is let's also create the one new car that will be of let's say a uh, BMW right BMW dot the dot file over here and let's create the class of the uh, BMW over here which extends from our car over here and we need to import this one over here so let's import that particular car over here so currently we don't have any of the functionality on this particular car so uh let's go and let's go to this particular uh, uh let's create a one more file over here that will be of the uh, main over here main main dot the dot file and let's go and have the uh, main function over here and now what we can do is we can go to create the uh, the object over here so final and let's say our uh, one is of the BMW which will be of equal to the BMW and we'll pass in the name and then the uh, the model over here and similarly now I can go and uh, start the BMW and also I can do the acceleration and then I can also go and stop that particular uh, the BMW right similarly I can just go and have the another uh, final and then uh, HONDA Honda over here let's have the HONDA Honda which is of equals to the uh, Honda that we have right and then the uh, we are going to say that a uh, Honda dot the start and we can also call the accelerate over here and then finally we are going to stop that particular car over here and now if I go and run this one over here let's open the terminal over here and I'll just go and run this one over here and once I go you can see that the car speed is 20 and then they are 120 plus uh, then then again this speed of zero but uh, I guess we what we can do is we'll go to the uh, car over here and just instead of the car I'll just go and then the brand over here so let's go and have that brand over here right so uh, BR and the brand over here um, I guess I'll just add the brand and then I guess let's remove the model from here so let's just go and add the brand over here and I'll just paste that particular brand over here so that should be fine I guess also let's go back to the main over here and let's run this one again so we got the BMW and then the Honda and uh, once you are uh, extend or uh, once you create the object of this class let's say you are creating some kind of the library or some kind of the packages over here so the later the user can use it so you'll see that uh, you the user just need to know how to use a start 
how to accelerate and how to stop that particular uh, uh, the car over here right he he or she doesn't need to know how you have implemented that internally over here in the car class over here so in this way you are actually hiding uh, or you are hiding the uh, unwanted part of your application right so let's say the user doesn't need to know how the uh, how it is going to stop the car, uh, what are, are, are the variable affected, right? How you are going to uh, log that one. So it, the user doesn't need to know. It does need to know how to use a function or a method from that particular car, which is of uh, add, let's say, uh, and then accel accelerate and then stop. So users just need to know about this, but uh, the user or, or, the, uh, or the developer doesn't need to know how that has been implemented internally. So let's go and let's say in the uh, in the Honda we have one name for over here. So enemy name for right. So let's just go and add a simple uh, list over here over here. And if I go back to um, let's go back to the main over here. So we have in the Honda right. Uh, I can just go and Honda that the passengers over here and uh, in the passengers if if i go and want to log all of the passengers name so if i go and run the uh, passengers name i'll get the name one name two name three and name four and if you take a look on the for each over here so if you go to this particular for each uh, it is actually taking that all of you pass in that and the all of the elements and it's again going to run the for uh, for loop over here right so internally how that has been implemented we don't need to know right so we just need to know how to use a for each over here right or let, let's say we just need to know how to sort it so if I want to get a length um, if I go and use the length of that one and if I go to the length implementation so how it is getting internally that particular um, the length of that particular uh, the list i don't need to know right or let's see if i go and say that the uh sort it out right so how the sort uh, algorithm is implemented internally i don't need to know over here right as as a user i just need to know how i can sort my this particular passenger list of the passengers over here so i don't need to know how that sort has been implemented internally by the dot itself right so this is a part of the dot core the internal implementation of that has been nothing to do with me i just need to know how to use that sort function over here or the forest function over here or the length over here so that's about the abstraction so hiding the unwanted information from the user right and only showing the useful information so i just need to know how to sort it or, or i just need to know how to use the for each over here uh, i don't need to know how to uh, how the internally it is implemented right so internally it has been hidden from us and we are just uh, getting the most usable information which is of the for each over here so i'll just go and add some uh, comment over here so uh, we can refer to it over here and i have added the comment over here which is of the data abstraction right and data abstraction is one of the most essential and important feature of the object oriented programming right and it refers to providing only the essential information about the data to the outside world. And we just saw uh, we just saw how we use that one and hiding the background detail or the implementation. And that is how we have achieved over here, right? Like the sort over here, and then the forage. And these are the actual, or if you uh, take a look, the actual example of that, um, the abstraction is over here, like sort, length, uh, all of those are. So how we can implement is by using the uh, abstract class and also we can use the interface uh, in some cases over here but mostly we are going to use abstraction in our application when we are building it in the later stage so i guess that's all for this lesson and i hope you uh, got some of the uh, idea or the concept about the abstraction and how we can achieve or how it is achieved in the dart itself so that's all and let's meet up in the next lecture till then have a great day
yeah hello there and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here and in this lesson we are going to learn about the encapsulation and this is the another pillar of the oop programming or the object oriented programming over here and the encapsulation is defined as the wrapping of the data under a single unit and if you can see over here it is a single unit which basically means that we need to wrap our data under a single unit which is a class over here so we need to wrap all of our data inside the class over here it is the mechanism that binds together code and data and data it manipulates so it, it it is the mechanism that binds together the code and the data it manipulates another way to think about the encapsulation is that it is a protective shield that prevent the data from being accessed by the code outside of this particular shield so basically we are creating one kind of the shield and uh, it's like the if you have seen a capsule right so in the capsule there is a protective shield and to access that uh, the like let's say in, inside the capsule there is some kind of the uh, medicine like you will see a round round kind of the uh, pills inside right so if, if you want to access that we have to break that particular capsule right you can't directly access that there is a protective shield to access that particular uh, data inside that capsule so similarly you can think of the encapsulation in a similar way there is a protective shield to access the internal uh, or detail of that particular class over here and uh, what we can say over here is that the uh, technically in encapsulation uh, the variable or the data of a class is hidden from any class and can only be accessed through any member function of its own class in which they are declared so here what it means that is we need to create a variable or, or a class member or a function or, or a method and this can only be accessed right this can only be accessed through inside that particular own class so let's say we create a person class and if you if you create if you want to have an encapsulation encapsulation basically means that uh, the variable that we create or the uh, method that we create inside that particular class can only be accessed from that particular class only you cannot access once uh, you are outside of that particular class so let's say you create the instance of that particular class let's say a person equals to a person right that creates the new instance of the class but if you want to access that particular uh, variable or, or the uh, method or the function, you can't access it outside of that particular class over there. And once you create the instance of that particular class, right? Once you create the object from that particular class, you can't access it. It can only internally access, but the outside world can't access that one. As in encapsulation, the data in the class are hidden from the other class, as we just know, right? So it is also known as the data hiding. Encapsulation can be achieved by declaring all the variables in the class as private and writing a public method in the class to set and get that particular variables or values of that particular variable. So what we need to do is we need to create a private variables, right? Uh, let's say you have a class name a person and that person has the uh, you have the member variable of let's say a name and that name if you want to access outside of that particular class you need to create a setter and a getter right setter is to set the value and getter is to get the value so in this way we can achieve the encapsulation over here so let's go back to our code and write some uh, code over here and previously we learned about the abstraction so let's go and create the one more folder let us create one file over here inside this encapsulation folder and i'll call it as a person and also i'll create the another uh, file over here inside the encapsulation as well and that will be of the main dot the dot file over here and let's go to the person over here and let's create the uh, class over here that will be of the uh, person a person -E person and uh, let's go and have some variable let's say a final or we'll just create a lid variable right so lid string and that will be of the name over here and also let's create the uh, lid variable of the int of the age over here 
and if you uh, if I have the person then let's go and create a new uh, class over here that will be of let's see uh, Richard over here sorry let's have the RSCH here the Richard dot the uh, dot over here and inside this let's create the uh, class RSCH RD Richard over here and here if I go and create the uh, final and that will be of the let's say PRS1 person and which is equal to the person class over here right and if I go and take a look now if I go and have the uh, person PRS1 person dot and sorry I need to access this one over here PERS person dot and you can't find any of the um, usable uh, okay so i need to create a constructor sorry for that one so so let's create the uh, function over here and that will be of the uh, let's say uh, void right so and then the uh, get the name right and I can just remove the prompts over here and I'll just go and print the person that name so you can see that we have access to that particular person that name over here and if, even if you go to the main over here and let's create the uh, void uh, sorry let's create the main function over here final appear as one person over here and let's go and create the variable of the uh, per as one person equals to the person over here person dot and you can access the age as well as the name from here right so there is no issue so what we want to do in encapsulation is we want to hide that particular things from here so we don't want that particular name and age to be directly accessed once we create the instance over here right so let's say we just move this one inside of this particular function over here and once we create that instance or once we create the object from our person class over here we don't want to access that particular name directly over here so if i access the age i can still access the age over here and if i want to access that particular age over here as well i can access it so what we need to do over here is we need to prevent that from uh, directly getting access or which is the encapsulation so let's go back to the person over here and i'll just make this one as the uh, private over here and private over here as well so now once i have the uh, private uh, variable of the age and then the name and if i go back to the main over here and you'll see that this particular age and the name is uh, enable to or sorry we can't access that particular variables from this particular class which is of the age inside this particular function once we have the uh, object created from that particular person right so this is, we, we need to create a getter right in, in order to access that one similarly if I go to the main that is the same thing right so now I can also go and set the uh, value so I cannot go and set the value of the name as the uh, Richard over here that is not available so we can't access it so how we can make this uh, variable to access for outside world is uh, let's say I don't want this name to be set from outside but I want it as to be get from outside of this world so once I create the object of this particular person I want to get a name but I can't set a name in this way so how we can achieve that one is let's go over here and let's create a getter and and for that particular so if, if I say string name uh, get a name and then if I return that particular name from here all right so I, I should be able to get that name from here so if I say a get name and if I remove this particular um, if I remove this one from here right so let's go and close this one so I can get a name over here so I don't have any error over here but if I go to the main now I can't set that so you need a setter method for the class in the name value to be set so there isn't a setter name for a name variable in the class person over here 
So there is no setter in, in this particular class. That's why we only can get now. So now in this way, we create an encapsulation over here. So we can only access, but we can't set it, right? So that is the benefit of having a getter and then the setter. And this is called the encapsulation over here. So let's say for the H, we want to create the, both the getter and then the setter over here. So next is I want to get a uh, int variable of the get H right and also i want to create a setter for this one over here so uh, let's go and create the uh, set over here and set for this one i'll go and set the edge and provide the in value and then edge will be of that particular value so i create a setter over here this is a set edge for this particular value and i pass some in value and i uh, i assign that particular value that particular edge so now I can go over here and I can just say h is of equals to uh, I will just go and let's say of uh, 20 over here. So now I can set this one, but I can't set this one. So let me go and comment this one. Um, there is no is setter. Right. So I, OK, so I need to create this one as a comment. There is no is setter for name in person class over here so once we have that now we achieve our encapsulation over here by hiding our uh, name right so they can't access that particular name they can access they can read the value but they can't set the value but for our int we can read the age as well as we can also set the value over here so if i go and set uh, get a uh, void uh, get the uh, let's say go get the not the a h over here right and i'll just go and create a person and then the person that is so i can access that one over here but if i take a look on the uh, person uh, sorry if i go to the person class only for the name we have the a getter not the set so let's go and assign some uh, value over here and i can also go and create the uh let's say create a get the name over here so let's say this is of the uh get the name so get name over here and this will go and set the our uh, value so let's say return uh, I will go and return a name. So let's say I want to get some name from maybe our API or maybe our database or something like let's say Richard uh, day one over here. So this is going to return me uh, a name. So this is a private uh, function or private method over here, right? So if I go to the uh, in the class plus uh, Richard over here and if I want to go and access that from let's say this particular uh, person over here. So if I say uh, a person dot and i can't have access to that particular uh, method over here so that is the uh, a function or the method we created as a, a private and we enable it to be only accessed from inside this particular person class this is the also a encapsulation so you are hiding this particular uh, the uh, function from outside world right so this is another way of encapsulation not only the uh, variables or the member of this particular class can be of a private but we can also create a private methods over here to uh, enable our encapsulation inside of our person class over here so let's go and have the uh, constructor for this particular uh, person over here and this person has the uh, name so let's go and uh, at the okay so let's go and set the h and then and then the we can also set the uh, name to be get from the uh, another of method over here so now we can only access this one from inside of our person class right the get name uh, a method over here and we can access directly this particular method from outside of this particular person class so this is also a way of achieving a encapsulation over here so i think you got the point over here so uh, if i want to go and close all of this and if i go over here now if i want to access that particular uh, person dot uh, person dot the name over here i can achieve it 
but I cannot set that particular value over here, right? And uh, let's go and print all of this over here. And I'll just go and print this one from here and paste it over here. And as well as the person dot H. Okay, so let's go and access it only. Let's not go and set that particular value over there. So I'll just go and cut this section and as well as paste it over here. And uh, let me just go and run this one. So there is an error. Okay, so there is error. So I just need to run this one so i got a uh, h as a 20 and the name as a uh, richard day one over here so that's the uh, simple demo of the encapsulation how we can hide encapsulation uh, is basically the mechanism where we can hide the uh, hide the our uh, variables and then the method and which once we create the instance of that particular uh, class we can't access that one so this is the form of encapsulation so let me just go and create some um, add some comment over here so we can read that one and once we have this particular comment let's go through the encapsulation is defined uh, as a uh, wrapping up data under a single unit so this we can achieve by wrapping up our data inside the class over here right and it is a mechanism that binds together the code and the data and it's manipulate and the data it manipulates right so this is the mechanism and another way to think of encapsulation is that it is a protective shield that prevent the data from being accessed by the code outside of this particular shield. So we create a shield for this particular person class, right? And uh, this is by defining a private variables or the member over here and also the private uh, method over here that we have defined over here. And once we have that, we can't access that directly, right? So we can't directly set it as well as we can directly access the uh, value over here like the person dot the um, we have the underscore get name right so we can access this particular uh, function or the method over here so and if I go back over here technically the encapsulation the variable or the data of the class is hidden from the other classes and can be accessed only through the member function of its own class in which they are declared so we can only access all of those values from inside of on our own functions inside of this particular or, or the method inside this particular class so if i have the uh let's say a uh, string type over here and if i say i uh, get the full full name over here and this is going to uh, return us our name right and then the let's say uh, let's me do the string interpolation over here that will be of the uh, let's say dollar underscore the name and then the age over here so this is also let's go and say that we create a private over here and if we create that we can access that particular private variables from within this particular uh, class person over here right so we can access this outside of this particular person class over there and in encapsulation can be achieved by declaring all the uh, all the variables in the uh, class as a private right and writing a public method in the class to set and get the values of the variable so here this is what we are doing so we are creating a private variables and we are setting a, a, a setter and then the getter over here right so that is how we can achieve the encapsulation over here so I think you got the uh, idea about the encapsulation over here and previously we learned about the abstraction and encapsulation and then the abstraction works together but they are, are a bit different over here. So that's all for this lesson and we'll meet up in the next lecture till then have a great day. yeah hello there and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here and in this lesson let us go and learn about the inheritance and in the previous lessons we have covered about the abstraction and then the encapsulation and inheritance is the another pillar of the oop programming over here inheritance is a mechanism in an object oriented programming that allows a class to inherit properties and behaviors from the another class so if you take a look over here it inherits the properties and then the behavior of another class so properties are like you can class properties like you can define uh, 
property name like the name age and all of those are the properties and behavior basically means that you have the uh, functions or the methods over there right the class that is being inherited each uh, inherited from it's called a super class or the base class we call it as a parent class super class or the base class while the class that inherits from it each called the subclass or the drive class we usually call this one as a subclass or the drive class or also we can call it as a child class and inherits promotes the code reuse and allows for the creation of the uh, hierarchical relationship so there is a each or relationship so you create a class of an animal and you extend it using a dog a class right so dog each or animal so there is always a relationship between it and the subclass can access and utilize the member properties and then the method so we can utilize the properties like class properties like the class variables that you define as well as the methods or the functions of the superclass including any of the uh, public so we can only access the public methods and then the properties right we can't access the private over there and uh, there is no protected in the dart itself right it can also add its own member to override the behavior of the super class member so if you want to override we can also override the uh, behavior or the methods as well as the properties of the super class over there so let us go and take a look into uh, practically how we can define our inheritance in our project so let's go back to the uh, vs code over here and i have already created one folder over here so let me just go and create a one new uh, main dot the uh, dot file over here first of all and let's add the uh, main method over here and let's go and create a one new file let's say we have a dog class over here sorry let's have our, our dog dog dot dot file and let's go and create the a class of the dog over here and let's say uh, the dog can have a, a name all right so str and the string and then we can have a, a bre ed breed over here and once we have that let's go and create the uh, constructor for this two over here and let's go and add the uh, constructor generated constructor for this one and let's go and have the function over here so void and let's say our dog can bark right and also let's add the another one uh, uh it right so let's say uh it over here e a t it over here and a dog can uh, similarly the name of each eating over here and now let's go and have the another one uh, i guess uh, it and the bark is two is enough for now also we can write the one more over here uh, let's say avoid slip right and if i go back to the uh main over here i can go and create the uh final of the uh, dog over here and that will be of equals to the dog class we need to import and we need to pass the name let's say our uh, max and then the breed each of let's say uh pit bull over here right so let's say pit b u l l pit bull and that should be fine so now you can see if i go and run right a dog can uh, max is eating max is sleeping and then the max is barking similarly if i go and now if i have a one more new class that is of let's say a uh, i can have a uh, let's say a cat dog the cat dot the dot file over here and let's create the uh, class of the cat and cat can also have the properties some of the properties like let's say a uh, string of the uh, name over here and a string of the uh, br the breed itself and let's go and create the constructor for uh, this one over here let's go and create the constructor so now we can have the uh, constructor both of these are required field let's go and have the void of the function eat right the cat can eat right so also we have the cat can sleep as well 
and I guess we have the one more which is of the uh, cat can meow right so cat doesn't bark so cat usually meow over here and once we have that we'll go back to the main over here and we'll create the final variable of the cat which is of equals to the cat class over here and we'll provide the name let's say uh, uh, let's say uh, pow right or the pow let's say a cat name is pow and the prs are in a person right so cat can eat cat can sleep as well as the meow right so if i go and run this one you can see if i go over here you can see that the uh pow is eating and pow is sleeping and then the pow is meowing so that's the um, the uh, the methods that we can use on this particular cat class but if you go and take a look in the cat and then the dog class there is a similarity right so we have this similarity of name and breed as well as the eat and then the sleep so both of the cat and dog can, has a name and the breed and as well as it has the uh, a method to eat as well as the sip so the functionality of this particular class you can see there is some um, the code of both of this cat and dog there is a similarity of the code right so it has the function of the eat and the sleep so what we can do is using the inheritance what we can do is we want re we can make this as a reusable code so for that we will go and create the one new file and call this one as a animal uh, a n i m a l animal dot d dot file and let's go and create the uh, a n i uh, let's create a class right so let's create a class of the a n i m a l animal over here and let's go and have this let's just go and close it so it can have the string name and also we'll extract the uh, bre the breed over here and once we have that we'll just go and create the uh, let's go and create the constructor for this one as well and once we have that we'll just go and grab this uh, let's go and copy or cut this section from here we don't require it from here now and i'll just go and put that one in our animal class over here and now i'll just go to the dog as well i'll just go and remove these two from here right so i can remove these two from here and if i go to the main and now you can see there is some error that method cat, cat uh, it isn't defined in the dog so if i go over here so the dog doesn't have that particular function as well as in the cat there is no functionality for that one so what we need to do is we need to inherit from our animal class so since the cat and dog are this the animal so what we can do is we can inherit from the animal over here so let's go and ha have the uh, extend keyword over here extend from our animal class over here right so we extend it from the animal class now what we have to do is we have to add a super so we need to call the super from here right and we'll just pass in this particular uh, name and then the break so let's go and pass in the name that we have as well as we'll pass in the uh, breed over here so we need to call the super once we extend it from the our uh, parent class right so what we need to do is we need to call the super right so we need to call the super constructor of this animal class so if in the animal class we have the constructor this is the constructor that we have right so once we extend from that what we need to do is we need to call the super and pass in the required prompts to that particular constructor over here and let's go to the dog over here and in the dog as well i'm going to uh, extend from this dog is going to extend from the animal again right so what i will do is i'll just go and call the super again over here uh, constructor add a super uh, constructor super over here and this one we are going to pass in the same as the uh, name that we have and we also have the uh, breed over here 
So we are going to pass it to the super constructor over here. Now, if we go back to the main over here, you will see there is no error, right? So we'll just can run as normal. Max is eating, sleeping, barking, and then the pow each of eating, sleeping, and then it's also mapping over here. So now you can see there is a code reusability over here. Let me copy the uh, previous comment over here so we can read it. And once I have added the comment, let's go through this particular comments over here. So inheritance is a mechanism in object oriented programming that allows a class to inherit the properties and then the behavior from the another class, right? The class that is being uh, inherited from it's called the super class or the base class. So similarly, what we have done is we have the uh, super class or the base class, which is of the animal over here. And it has some properties, which is the name and the breed. And then it has some functionality, which is of the uh, method that we have, which is of eat and then sleep over here. So this can be like inherited from our subclass or the child class, right? Which is of the cat and then the dog. Since the dog and the cat each are animal, right? So each are animal. So there is always a relationship between the dog and then the animal over here. And while the class that inherits from it's called the subclass. So we have there is a subclass and then the uh, super class. If you take a look over here in the we have used a super over here that is always going to call the animal constructor over there. And inheritance promotes the code reuse and allows for the creation of hierarchical relationship between the classes. So now we saw that practically how we can create a hierarchical relationship between the classes. So now dog is an animal, right? And then the cat is also an animal over here. And the subclass can access and utilize the member or the properties or the methods of the superclass, right? Including all of the publics and then the protected members over here. The next thing what we'll do over here is let's go back to our cat and dog over here. And let's remove this one, right? So we don't actually require that one. So I'll just remove that one and just remove this one as well over here. And I'll just call this one as a string of the let's say uh n a m in name over here as well of the string i'll directly put it in the constructor string of the breed over here so once i have that i actually don't require so there is no name and then the property of the name as well as the breed defined in the class of the cat as well so we can do the same thing for our dog over here we will remove this one right and i can actually go and remove this one from here and now I'll just go and say the string of the uh, name and then the breed over here. But even if I go and have this one over here, dog can bark. So you can actually access that name over here, right? So that is actually coming from the animal itself. So this is coming from the animal. So you can see that the inherited from the animal over here. So a string name. We don't have that animal name over here in the dog class itself. Similarly, if you go over here, you can see the cat doesn't have any property of the name and then the breed. But still, we have the um, name property accessible over here because we are inherited from uh, we are inheriting from the animal class over here. So similarly, if I go and say the uh, void and then I'll just go and create the get the um, bred breed over here. And uh, let's go and print the breed over here. So you can easily access that properties of the parent class without any of the issue over here. So we don't have to define it actually in this particular class. So now if I go and remove the, uh, the named parameter from our constructor over here, let's go and remove that one over here as well and over here as well. So now uh, what we can do is we can just go and run this one as well. And you will see it is working as usual right so we can easily access that the uh, we can access the properties and then the methods of the super class over there right so we don't have to define in uh, our subclass so there is a code reusability so you can completely have a relationship between the cat and the animal and move all of the uh, the reusable properties to the uh, animal class over there
so animal class all has all of these uh, properties as well as it has some of the functionality right so the properties and then the methods over here so the subclass or the child class is going to inherit all of those without any issue right so it doesn't have to define that itself and the next thing what we'll do over here is since this class now if you go to the main and if i go and create the uh, let's say a final and then the uh, a and i animal over here which is of equals to the animal itself over here so now we can see that we can actually go and construct this particular class over here that is of the uh, animal over here now i can go and type the animal dot breed itself but in inheritance we don't want to do this kind of stuff we don't want to go and actually have the instance of this particular class Right, so it can only be uh, what we want to do is we only want to have uh, been able to extend, but we don't want to actually go and have the instance of that particular class. Obviously, there is nothing wrong if you want to proceed with these steps, but usually what we do is we create the abstract class over here, abstract over here, and this make this particular class as the abstract over here. And if I go over here now and okay so i need to remove this one from here right and let's import the uh, animal over here let's go and import the animal over here this is from the uh, import the animal over here so let's go and import that one over here and now you can see that we can go and create the instance of that particular class over abstract class can't be instantiated so we can create the instance or we can create a new object out of this particular animal class so this is also perfectly fine so if you don't want to create the instance of that particular class you can always create it as an abstract class over here so let me just go and comment out this one this is not allowed over here so i can just uh, also go and comment out this one as well over here and let me just go and comment out this one and uh, you can either create the abstract or if you prefer you can also go and have this one as an animal class right so this depends on the requirement so if you want to make this one as the um, the class or the object that can later be instantiated so class later you want to instantiate then you can remove the abstract keyword from here or else you can add the abstract keyword over here so in this way you can have a two option one is to use a abstract class or use a normal class over here but basically we will use uh, abstract whenever we are using it or uh, whenever we are following the inheritance over here so this is a better way of maintaining the inheritance over here since we cannot instantiate the uh, uh, animal class over here so i guess that's all for this lesson and hope you learned something new about the inheritance over here and we'll meet up in the next lecture till then have a great day yeah hello there and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here and let us look into the multiple inheritance in the dart so in the previous lesson we learned about the inheritance and today let us go and look into the multiple inheritance in the dart and how we can achieve so let's go and have a one new file over here and let's call this one as a dot file and let's create the class for this one and uh, dusickedug and uh, let's say it extends our uh, animal class over here right so once we have that animal and uh, let's go and import that particular animal class over here so once we have this uh, we are good to go so if i go to the animal now we have the eat and then the sleep right so if i go back to uh, this particular class over here and if i create the instance of the final and let's say do you see a duck and then we'll create the duck class as well over here and then the dog name is the you see k dog and then let's say a breed of the uh let's say uh do you see k duke uh do you see k duke duke 
okay cool so once we have all of this information what we can do is we can just go and do uh, double that breed uh, so i can access the breed and i can just go and have the it as well as the sleep functionality for this one and if you take a closer look onto this particular dog what we can see is dog can actually swim and it can also fly right so maybe it can fly a little bit but not much but usually it can swim so what we can do is in the animal if we try to add a swim right so void and s w i m swim functionality over here but uh, this is not a correct way but now if i go and say that the dog right so we have the dog dog dot can actually swim now right so dog can swim now so that's not a good idea over here and it's not a good way of uh, having the inheritance because dog cannot swim or cat cannot swim right so this is not a swimmer right so maybe your dog can swim but some dog cannot swim not, not all dogs can swim right they need some practice over there so uh, what we can do over here is instead of uh, using this animal right so instead of creating this uh, swimmer uh, behavior over here what we will do over here is uh, we can uh, use this one as a multiple inheritance in dart using a mixing so dart doesn't support a direct inheritance a multiple inheritance a multiple inheritance basically means like if i go and create the new file over here and uh, let's say swim swim over here dot the um, dart file and let's create the uh, abstract uh, class over here and this will be of the swim swim over here and we'll just go and call the functionality of the uh, void uh, swim over here and uh, let's go and have this functionality over here and once we have this uh, function over here uh, let's go to our uh, cat over here and what we'll do is I can just go and add the uh, extend the swim swim over here all right and if I say that it's not going to take that one so each class I define have at most one extend class so it can only extend one parent class over here so it can only inherit from one class over here all right so that is the main thing we can use the implements over here you can implement multiple class but what we are doing over here is we want to uh, have the extend that functionality of this particular uh, swim over here where is that swim class over here and let's go and say that um, print um, name is swim so I, I'll just say that I can swim over here so let's say uh, I can swim so let's say i can swim over here i don't want to pass in any of the argument and all of this stuff so let's just keep it as a simple now how we can achieve a multiple inheritance in dart is using a mixing keyword so as you saw just now we can't use the extend keyword right so we cannot extend the uh, swim class over here again but what we can do is let's go back to the swim instead of creating this one as a abstract uh, class what we will do over here is we can make this one as the let's say abstract mi xn mixing over here or uh, i will remove the uh, abstract for now and just create a mixing over here and now it can swim over here right and if i go back to the uh the cat over here now what i can do is i will use the width keyword and with i will just import that particular swim over here as well and now i have the function to override which is of to swim over here so if i say i can override that particular swim over here but the cat as you can say it cannot swim so not all, all not all cat can swim right so i'll just remove this particular functionality from here we are not going to use it over here and we'll go to the dog class over here and the dog class actually can swim so in it can also extend or it can extend multiple but we'll go and use a mixing with uh, mixing i have to use a uh, with keyword and if i go and import that particular now i can just go and override the swim functionality over here so this is the 
swim behavior that I can achieve. So even if I don't override this one over here, now what I can go and uh, go to the main and I'll just remove this one from here. And instead of eat and sleep, now the uh, dog can also swim over here, right? Now, if I go and say the cat dot swim, I don't have that. So, right. So if, okay. So I think I have extended that particular. Let's go to the cat. And I guess I have that somewhere over here. So cat can swim. So let's go and see from where that is particularly coming. Cat, 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 cat. So here. And then the cat can swim over here. So let's go and take a look to this particular functionality. So this is coming from the abstract animal. So here is the swim functionality. So I need to remove that one. So that is not what we want over there. Let's remove that. And let's also now I can't access that one. So even if I go to uh, dog dot the swim, uh, I can't access that particular behavior or the functionality of the swim. So now only the uh, dog or uh, the our duck, right? Duck can swim over here, not the dog. But it's a duck can swim over here. Her pronunciation may be a bit similar over here. So what we can say is using a mixing, what we can do is we can stimulate the uh, some aspect of the multiple inheritance in the dot. So multiple inheritance is by default sup supported like in the Java. And in that we don't have that functionality. Uh, it has been removed from a multiple inheritance has been removed from the dot because uh, it can create some confusion, right? So you you can create some confusion. So that was that's why it has been removed. And we have a mixing in a dot, uh, which uh, can we using which we can achieve somewhat uh, some aspect of the multiple inheritance over here. And if you have never used a mixing before, you may be quite confused over here. But what you can think of, uh, of the mixing is that uh, it is a way to add a functionality to an existing class without using the inheritance. So using this particular swim uh, mixing, what I can do is I can go to my uh, uh, duck class over here and I can add the functionality without using any inheritance. I, I can just use, use the width keyword over here and use a swim over here and I can uh, act, act, use the existing uh, functionality of that particular mixing uh, to my particular uh, duck class. So this duck class now has the functionality of the swim that we have defined over here. So we are not using the inheritance actually but uh, what we are achieving is now we can add the functionality to our existing class uh, somewhat using the uh, mixing over here. So it's quite maybe a quite confusing at the first time if you haven't used a uh, mixing before but once you get used to it it's quite easy. So you just define a mixing and you can use it anywhere uh, in your class. So you, you can extend go and extend that one over here. I can use a, a width keyword and then I can just go and swim it over here. So I can just use in this way, I can add the functionality of swim to my dog class without actually using the inheritance like the extend or the implements keyword over here. So that's all for this lesson and hope you learn about the in, uh, multiple inheritance in Dart, which is not supported by default, but we can achieve some of its functionality using a mixing keyword over here, right? Or the mixing modifier. And the mixing can also be of a class as, uh, as well. So if I go uh, over here and if I go to swim and if I say that the, uh, let's go and make this one as the, okay, so let me extend this one first of all. And let's go over here and uh, I'll just say the ABST abstract and abstract, uh, I think it's just for abstract class, uh, sorry, abstract mixing class over here. So CLA is this class over here. So now if I have that and if I go to the uh, duck over here, now I can just go and overwrite, uh, overwrite that one. So do you see it duck, all right? So swim. SWI and swim over here as well. So if I go back to the swim, now I have an extract mixing class of the swim over here. And what you can also do over here is you can make a abstract function over here. So if you want, you can make this one as an abstract function and you can just go and remove this one from here. So now you have to override. So if you don't override that functionality, 
you will get an, that particular error over here. So you must override that one. So this acts something like an abstract class now. So in the abstract class as a abstract function. So this one acts as an abstract function over here since this is an abstract mixing class over here. So the same functionality of the mixing as well as the abstract class is applied to this particular swim object over here. And now once we uh, go to our uh, a duck class over here and right? use a with swim, now I have to override this one. If I don't override, I'm going to get that particular error. So in this way, you can also achieve it in a multiple ways. So I'll just go and uh, comment this one out, right? So I'll just copy and paste this one uh, below over here in case if you want to use in this way. Uh, but I, I will just use as a, a mixing over here. So I, I can just go and I don't have to override that one. So let's go and I have the, okay, so I need to go over here and I need to just add this one over here and I can swim over here. So now that's good. And the another thing that I just forgot to mention about is if you have this particular as abstract mixing of the swim over here, if I go and comment out this one, and if I go over here, and instead of using this particular animal extend, I can also go and directly extend this particular swim over here. So if I go and add the machine over right, so I can also go and use as if as a as an abstract class over here. Now I can use it as an extend over here. So if you want to use in this extend as an extends over here using the extend modifier, then you have to make this one as an abstract mixing class over here. If not, what you have to do is you can just use it as a normal mixing, right? So if I go and uncomment out that one, and if I just go and leave it as before over here, and if I go back to swim, and this swim is the abstract, so I can just go and add the uh, concrete implementation for this swim method as well. And that should be good enough for us. So I, I, that's all for this lesson and uh, we will meet up in the uh, next lecture till then. Uh, have a great day. Yeah, hello there and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here and let us look into the polymorphism over here which is the another pillar of the OOP or the object oriented programming over here. It is a concept uh, by which we can perform a single action in a different ways. And polymorphism is derived from the two Greek word over here, which is a poly and then the morphis. The word poly means many and then the morphy means a form. So polymorphism means many forms over here. And um, once you read this particular concept over here, it's quite confusing over here. What is a poly? What is morphism? And why do we call it polymorphism? And how does it work, right? Um, the objects are designed to share, like let's say you create an object and it is designed to share a behavior and they can take one or more uh, more than one form. Let's say you create a, a object of a, a class, let's say a person, and the behavior or which behavior over here means the uh, function or the methods of that particular object or the class can take more than one forms. So once uh, reading all of this, it's quite confusing. Um, it's difficult to understand but once we go and implement it actually we will understand it better just remember that the polymorphism means many forms and we create an object through the class right and then the behavior over here means that it has the uh, functions or the methods over here uh, we will take the uh, behavior of that particular object and we will uh, use it to form a different or uh, more than one form right it can take many forms so let's go and see in a practical way how we can implement it let's go back to our project over here and uh, let me close all of this so let's just close all of this from here and let's go to the polymorphism and let's create the new file of the uh, main m a i n main dot the dot file over here right and then we'll also create a uh, one let's say a uh, class Let's say uh, a animal class. Let's create a animal dot the dart over here, and we'll have a uh, one mode which is of let's say a uh, dog dot the dart file, and let's also have the one more which will be of the cat dot the dart file. Let's take a simple example over here, 
and we'll go to the animal and let's create the uh, class of the animal over here a n i m a l animal over here and let's create the class or uh, let's create the function over here void and can eat right so let's say this function uh, this uh, method can eat over here so i'll just go and remove this one and create the abstract class over here so a b s t r a c t abstract over here and now once we have this it over here and uh, let's go to the i guess we'll go and create over here in the cat right so let's say the class of the uh, cat over here and let's go and extend that one right so we'll go and extend it from the animal a n i m a l animal over here I guess this will be from okay so this is not from here so I need to just import the animal dot that file over here and let's go and have the override that particular missing function right and I'll just go and do the same thing for our dog over here and this will be of the uh, dog class over here that will go and extend from the animal class over here and let us also go and add the one more function over here let's go and uh, let's go and have a one more function over here volt and, and then um, we'll also have the mak make sou and the sound right let's say both of these animal can uh, make a sound over here so we will go and inherit that to from here in our cat as well right so we need to inherit both of that particular uh, missing let's go and create the override over here and also let us override that one over here let's create the missing override here as well and what we'll do now is let's go and remove this comment from here and then since this is a dark object what we'll do here is uh let's go and print a simple thing over here that uh let's go and say a uh, dog each right so dog each e -A -T -I, eating over here and similarly we will do the same thing over here make sound over here and we'll just go and print a simple uh, things over here let's go and say uh dark each uh, b a r k i n g barking over here right so we'll just go and close it over here as well and we'll go to the cat as well over here and let's remove this one from here and let's call this one as a print over here and we'll just say this is a cat each e a t eating over here and let's close this one over here as well and let's go to the make sound and we will do the same thing over here print and then we'll just say cat h uh, m e a w i n g mewing or something right m okay let's just see say that that one is mewing or something over here and once we have that what we'll do is we'll go to the main over here and let's create the uh main method over here so m a i n main over here and let's have the object let's create the object from the cat and the dog over here so let's go and say final final cat which is of equals to the uh, cat over here and uh, i can go and say the cat right so cat dot the uh, it right so we'll just go and eat first and then after that we will just go and say cat dot the uh, mail over here right so let's go and say cat dot the make sound over here similarly we'll just go and make a final and then the uh, dog over here which is of equals to the dog as well and we need to import this dog over here let's go and add the dog over here and we can say uh, doz uh, dog right so dog uh, can eat over here as well and dog dot d can uh, dog dog dot can make sound over here so once we uh, go and run this particular code so let's go and try to run this one over here you'll see that cat is eating and then the um, dog is also eating and then the cat is mewing and then the dog is barking that is cool so we also have previously learned all of this stuff but if you go and take a look over here what we'll do now next is in the animal let's go and have a, a, um, um, a concrete method or the function over here so we'll just go and say that animal is eating over here right so now this is this of method has a body over here 
and this is an abstract method but this is a concrete method which has its body and we are going to say that animal is eating over here and uh, we will go and override that method same method over here in our um, the child class over here or the drive class which is of the cat say so we are overriding that eat method over here and if we go to the dog we are also overriding that particular eat method and we are doing a different thing over here so now dog is eating over here cat is eating but in the parent or the super class what we have is animal is eating so let's go back and over here and let's try to run this function again and you'll see that the cat is still eating dog is still eating it's not going to print that particular uh, right let's say yeah. Uh, animal is eating why because we have overridden that particular method over here and we have implemented the the functionality over here or the behavior of that particular uh, so one one behavior right can take a many forms right so here it is it is the same uh, it is a behavior that has been overwritten to cat is eating over here and similarly here in the dog we have the dog is eating so this once you override that particular uh, method from the parent or the super class in our child or the drive class over here and we implement the functionality in a different way then we are assuming a polymorphism over here once we override the behavior of that particular animal object to it, it you can see that it can take a different form over here so the object is of uh, the behavior that we are doing over here is completely different than what we have in the parent class over here which is of the eat it is saying that animal is eating but here in the cat and dog we have our different implementation of that particular behavior so it's basically saying that it can take a different form so once we override so once you override the uh, method over here then we are achieving a polymorphism over here and there are two types of the polymorphism one is a runtime and then the another one is a compile time once you override this particular functionality or the behavior it is actually a runtime polymorphism which basically means that once the code is running it will determine which one to execute whether it should go and print this one or whether it should go and print this one so this is a runtime polymorphism and uh, make sure you remember there is a two kind of the polymorphism one is the runtime and another one is a comp compile time so let me just go and add some comment over here so it will be easy for you to understand over here and here i have added some comment which means that the runtime polymorphism right so uh, the actual implementation of it is determined at runtime based on the object type so once we create the object type over here so if you go to the main so it will determine which one to execute over there so if you go to the cat over here that is what we are doing over here as well and i have added the same comment over here and uh, this override over here once you override the uh, method over here which is a method overriding so polymorphism is about the method overriding over here and the method overriding is also a runtime polymorphism so once we talk about the method overriding over here it is a runtime polymorphism and let us look into the compile time polymorphism over here so if you go to the uh, animal over here what we have is the um, the eat and it is eating over here and another one we have the abstract which can make a sound over here let us go back to the our uh, child or the drive class over here cat and then the dog i'll just go and have the same function let's go and copy this it function over here or the uh, method over here and i'll just uh, go and pass the parameter over here so string and then the let's say a uh, food over here and i'll just go and have the uh, print the cat is eating and then the dollar sign over here and then the fod food over here as well and we got an error over here which basically means that we have a multiple method or here with the same name so cat that it uh, is an invalid override override right and if you try to do the same thing so if i go and cut this section from here and if i go to do it on the over here over here in the uh 
animal or the parent class over here we still get that particular error the name it is already defined over here which basically means that the dot doesn't support the uh, a compile time um, polymorphism so just remember that that only supports the uh, runtime polymorphism and it does not support the compile time polymorphism over here which means that the compile time means that you can have a same method name right so i eat and eat but the parameters over here or the function argument that we are going to pass in should be a different type or maybe a here is a string and if you want to have the another function uh, or let's say uh, another function over here or the method over here with uh, int int of the food over here so you can have a same name with a different uh, prompts right and you can also have the same type over here let's say uh, this one and then this is of the uh, int of the uh, list over here so you can have a same name with a different kind of the parameters and then arguments over here but uh, in that it is not supported like the java or c++ they have the support of the uh, compile time polymorphism but in that just remember we don't have the compile time polymorphism so we can't make use of the same uh, function or the method name multiple times over here so i hope you got the idea um, the, about the polymorphism and how we can implement it in our dart project over here and that only supports the uh, runtime polymorphism and it does not support the compile time polymorphism if you want to learn more about the compile time polymorphism you can take a look onto the java or the c they have more detail about the compile time polymorphism like overriding or uh, overloading the uh, functionality in the previous that only supports the overriding of the functionality or the overriding of the methods over here which this is uh, overriding and if you take a look over here this is a method overloading so we are trying to overload the method over here using the compile time uh, polymorphism like a same method name with a different type of the prompts or the um, here the different length of the prompts over here so here you have a one here you have a two here you have a different uh, type right so this is a compile time polymorphism which is not supported in the dart that that has removed because if you have this it can create a confusion so according to that it has removed because it can create the confusion with the same type in the dart we can use the uh, optional right or the name argument in in the function so you can just have the name argument and provide that all of those stuff so i guess that's all for this lesson and we learn about the polymorphism and we have covered all of the four pillars of the object oriented programming in dart let's meet up in the next lecture till then uh, have a great day